Alright folks, I'm at my favorite river once again. The reason is, I actually had different plans today, but there's going to be a heavy storm come in at 1 o'clock. It's the first time it's rained in two months. Um, so we only got, as of right now, two hours and ten minutes before it's expected to hit. So I wasn't able to do the other thing I had planned uh, because we wouldn't have got there in, in enough time and been ready in enough time to be able to do it before the rain come. But also, since that storm is going to be coming through, and it's supposed to be a fairly decent rain, that will ruin this river for at least, uh, you know, four to five days if it don't keep raining. So it'll become real murky and high, possibly even flash flooding. So I wanted to, so I just switched my schedule around to come here one last time. Plus, walleye bite the best in saugers when it hasn't rained for a really long time, but a front is coming in like this. It is completely overcast, and it just sprinkled actually just for two minutes, but supposedly we have a couple hours. But um, So I figured this actually is the best time to be getting these because they weren't cooperating yesterday because it was really hot and sunny. When it's cloudy like this, the walleye and sauger and all fish in general feed more and they move around more and they cannot see you in this clear water so I think we'll have a better chance today to get fish than we did yesterday oh my god my wallet it's in my back pocket I got to put it in here in the I'm gonna put it in the zipper up front Don't unzip that. God. Luckily, I caught it before I walked to start walking across. Yeah. Huh? What? No, because if you catch stuff, then and I can't take anything with me. Then we'll walk back forth and scare them. Let's just go over there. We got a big long hole. You got more room to fish. Had a horrible morning. We've been fishing about three hours. The only thing I've caught is drum and a hybrid bluegill, a sunfish, sunfish bluegill hybrid. She just finally caught her first buffalo and a channel cat when I was down from her, and I didn't even have my camera because it was sprinkling a little while ago. I didn't want to risk getting my camera wet. And uh, we we've totally given up on lures. Oh no, they're gonna have to cut it. Can't even get that with pliers. Well, we got oh, because it's a regular hook. Yeah. There's no way you're just gonna have to use a jig head. I can't get that. You have to use a jig head. Yeah. A little channel cat. He's about a pound, and she just got a smallmouth buffalo in. He's about a pound also. That's a black buffalo. Yeah. 
You know how I can tell the lips are real poofy. Uh huh. No, that not be a. That might be a small mouth. I think a black. Yeah, black's darker than that. All right, folks. First buffalo of the day. It makes no sense today because the storm's rolling in. It was supposed to start at one o'clock. It's now two o'clock and hasn't rained yet. I fished for two hours with lures and abs have gotten absolutely nothing. Okay. It has just been one disappointment after another on the fish actually biting. The rough fish are kind of biting, but I've caught absolutely nothing with crankbaits, twister tails, rebel crawdads, or whatever. I've grown at them. It don't seem to matter. It's just been horrible. So I finally. I finally put a night crawler on and went down river and I just managed to catch two two pound drum a minute ago. Not again. It's a drum, little one. I caught two of them exact same size. About one pound even. Yeah. Buffalo, and here's the same. They're all the small mouth. There's no big mouth. Maybe they don't like this kind of river. I don't know. A little over a pound, pound and a half. That's the only thing biting, really. Gar though. It's big though. He's a big one. Mid 20s again. Yeah, maybe not that big as I thought. He's only about 20 inches. Oh, good, he got off. I didn't have to deal with it. Uh, small mouth? Hey, that's a nice small mouth. He's probably 13 or 14 inches. Or at least 12 from here. It looks, yeah, 12 or 13. Huh. Let me zoom in on him. H hold him up for a second before you take it off. Good job, honey. Nice small mouth. Yeah. Game fish, I think, on my bandit crankbait. It's not a gar. He would have done been to the top. And it is a walleye. Yes, a real walleye on the bandit crankbait. I have any, I'm, I'm not even fishing for walleye right now, folks, because I honestly have never caught a walleye on a crankbait that is regular shaped. They like the banana shaped ones. Um, and this is a decent one. He's 18 or 19 inches. Oh, and he's barely hooked. Let me grab him. That's a nice walleye, folks, for this river. It finally, after three days, after three days of fishing for walleye, I finally caught one. See, it has the white tip on its tail. Mm -hmm. On the bandit, on the bandit. There's nothing this, this thing can't catch, nothing. It catches buffalo, it catches catfish, white bass, crappie. Pickerel. I've even caught some jumbo bluegill on this thing. And I I gave up fishing for walleye about an hour ago. 
because they just weren't biting. And God forbid I finally got one. I would measure it, but I can tell you right now, he's about 17. He's about a 17 incher, so I'm not gonna bother. If I, if I knew he was 20 or bigger, I'd measure it, but uh, he's about 17 inches. All right. You've heard, you guys probably, heard, you've heard me talk about this bandit crankbait a million times, but I'm telling you what, it is the overall best lure I've used this year, the last two years, actually. Um, when I usually fish for walleye, I usually use yellow twister tails or chartreuse or orange or green, but uh, I was uh, actually just trying to catch bass and smallmouth and stuff, and I ended up getting him. It's a nice surprise. I'm gonna hold him up, up for you guys. Goodness gracious, he is feisty. Well, I'm gonna end up damn it hurting him. I'll quit dropping it. I'm trying to get a good view of this guy. He's all dirty now, but nice walleye nonetheless. Uh, he's about 16 inches. I changed my mind. He's not quite 17. And that is a pure walleye. Tail by the fin. Walleye got the white tip on their tail right here. As you can see, a white tip. And uh, Sauger don't. We're gonna let him back before he gets hurt. Oh, honey, you wanna see it one more time? Finally. I know. <sighs> there he goes. Finally. I got what I came for. Is my crawdad? No, I took the crawdad off. Never mind. I might as well just keep using this. Obviously, it works, right? Bass. So we got a smallmouth, walleye, and white bass. We need a crappie. It's been a really terrible slow day, and we were just patient enough to stay in the same hole and just keep trying and trying instead of waiting. Good job. Let me zoom in on you. That's your biggest white bass this since we've been on vacation, hasn't it? Or your only one, isn't it? Oh, okay. He's not a bad one. He's about ten inches. Show it. Hold him up by the lip, where you can get a good view. Where you, oh, okay. Good job. On a night crawler. Huh, cool. But keep holding it right where you got it. Okay. All right. Good job. I'm going to guess he's 10. If I was to guess any size. Got a little, little one pound channel. On a night crawler with a jig head. This place will be missed dearly. I probably won't come here until this time next year, but I may come in the spring for white bass. It all depends, the white bass run all depends on 
how high the Mississippi is during the month of the first week of April, last week of March, yeah, um, because that causes them to be able to migrate up here or not. If the water remains low in the Mississippi, then they don't come up this far. Um, the, the prime time and it, it, for white bass, uh, it varies every year. What you want it to be is you want the Mississippi to be really high, but not due to a lot of rain in the local area. You want this creek, you don't want it to have a lot of rain right here. That way, what it causes, it causes the Mississippi to push this back, but it remains crystal clear like this. If it's due to a, if it's due to a lot of rain right here, then you got real swift, muddy water, flash floods or whatever. So you want it to be this water quality, like this, real clear, but the Mississippi to be way up, and what it does, it pushes this water back to where it's about an average of four to five foot deeper everywhere than it is right now, and then white bass can migrate up here for eight miles, seven, eight miles, and uh, when that happens, they're all uh, 12 inches or bigger, especially when the females come up. Um, so I, I'm, I went to Tennessee last spring for the white bass because I like to catch the yellows as well at the same time, which we don't have here. Uh, but depending on what's going on, how much money I can save or whatever, I'm, if not, I'll just come here and do the white bass run here. Like I said, depending on the water quality, it's, it seems to be like only one out of every three or four years is actually good and the others it just backfires and it's just due to mother nature so we'll just have to wait and see we are halfway through my vacation now uh, it's Tuesday we still got Wednesday Thursday and Friday to fish uh, I'm gonna start going other places now I'm gonna hit the Mississippi River and also the coal mines so Stay tuned for some upcoming video. All right, I'm gonna shut off. So we're at a place I haven't been to in nine years. It took me too long to find it. So I ain't got but about 20 minutes. It's very rural. We're talking about 30 miles from the nearest town. This is the island I was talking about on the Mississippi River. It's a three mile long island and about two miles down it. It has a rock dike on each side going out and it has just a little split in the middle and you fish this rapids for white bass. This three miles is long enough, it gives it just enough time to actually clear the water. It kind of turns a greenish color. It is one of the most amazing fisheries I can remember. There's so many humongous white bass in here. This is it already some really big fish in here flatheads blues but there's uh, for some reason you're able it's clear enough that you can fish it for white bass with lures uh, at certain times of the year definitely now with it being October and it hasn't rained for two months almost anywhere in the Midwest it should be good and prime I think this is where I'm gonna fish tomorrow since I didn't have enough time to, to hit this real good we got 20 minutes is about all we got oh man it's just like i remember it amazing gosh wow all right folks i'm gonna get down here start hammering these bad boys hopefully they hit the bandit last time i was using four inch white twister tails how i was getting them that was in 2008 i believe it may have been 2006 that's how long it's been since i've been here a whole decade I actually like the other side better, but there's absolutely no way to get to it. Oh my God, what was that? Something huge has jumped. This is gonna be a good catfishing spot too. I think this is where I'm gonna come instead of fishing the main Mississippi because everything that swims will come through here.
I like that side better, but you can't get to it. There's no way, absolutely no way to get over there. This would be a good place to catfish too, wouldn't it? I might consider it. Did you bring the worm? That's all right. We could have used the worms though, too. It's all right. We ain't got enough time. It used to be more connected than this. It's actually changed. It used to only have about a 10 foot gap in the middle and it was better. It's split open a lot of it now, probably due to flooding and not maintaining it. It's not as good as it was. <laughs> 